Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays! This week on Board the Game Bakes, we're having a Christmas episode. We're featuring ugh, Obsession by Kanta Games, and there was also fun expansions. There's these ones, and then there's an upstairs downstairs expansion too. There's a lot of game, so many different strategies. I love it. I was not disappointed at all. I'm definitely a Prime Prejudice fan, and this just hit all the checked all the boxes and I loved the style of the game and I can't wait to open the expansions and try again. I decided that we're going to die back in time into the Victorian era and do some Victorian foods maybe with a little twist. These are based on how to cook the Victorian way which is a fun book that I also highly recommend. We're going to make a Christmas pudding which is also called a figgy pudding and doesn't really look like how we describe pudding in America at all but it's delicious and pretty boozy. Also going to make some mincemeat pies. Traditionally, they are made with mincemeat, which I think is very good. What we'd call ground beef here. Knowing my friend group, I don't really want to waste the food. So I decided to go for the vegan or vegetarian filling option that doesn't have the meat, but has so much flavor. It's delicious. We've got a lot of work to do. Let's get started. Have you ever had some figgy pudding? Like in the popular Christmas song? This is a first for me, so let's get cooking. You can make this in an actual Christmas pudding mold, a cylinder cake pan, or a sheet pan like this. Use butter to grease all the nooks and crannies so it doesn't get stuck, cause that would be a big bummer. To make our Christmas pudding, put one cup raisins, three quarter cup currants, one cup peeled and chopped apple, one cup breadcrumbs, a half a teaspoon pumpkin pie spice, two thirds a cup sugar, two thirds a cup flour, three eggs, one tablespoon candy peel, a half a cup brandy, and one and a half cups Crisco in a large bowl. This recipe has my favorite directions. Mix all ingredients together well. Mixing with my hands, because this is apparently an easier way that they used to do during the Victorian times because the wooden spoons could have more germs. You'll notice that I use Crisco. Traditionally, this would have suet, but this isn't really available in the United States. So apparently Crisco could be an acceptable alternative. If you're going to use Crisco, you want to put it in the freezer so it hardens up and then you could grate it. And ideally, before it clumps together like mine, you mix it all in so it's evenly distributed. Dump your ingredients into your butter and mold. Put a piece of parchment paper over your pudding so this way it doesn't stick while it cooks. Before cooking, cover the top with a muslin or a pudding cloth, which I do not have, so aluminum foil could also be substituted. Put it over the top and you wrap a string around it to make sure it's nice and tight. You also want to create a pleat in the middle in case it expands out of your mold so it has room to grow. While you're prepping your pudding, bring a pot of lard to a boil. The recipe in the traditional Victorian Christmas book didn't mention that you don't want your pudding to touch the bottom, but during my research I found that a lot of the recipe tells you to avoid this. So first I tried using a large plate, which made a very loud noise and splashed. Then I was finally successful and crumbled up some aluminum foil which I put under the mold. Your pudding should be immersed in the water up to an inch below the top. Once it returns to a boil, your goal is to keep it at a rolling boil for four hours. Yep, four hours. The directions then say to cover it, so I just kept refilling it with boiling water. So it looks like some recipes have you put a lid on it so this way it doesn't lose as much water. After four long hours, remove it from the water, yay! Traditionally, it would be demolded and served immediately. I was a little bit more tentative, so I let mine cool a bit before attempting to remove it. Hooray! It came out! And look, you can kind of see the flower shape. Happy Holidays! While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe for new videos every Tuesday. Thanks! Hold on tight for a flavor explosion. It's time to make our meatless minced meat pies. I was a little skeptical when I saw this recipe, but they're so good. The recipe basically starts the same as our other recipe. Combine one cup raisins, a half a cup currants, a half a cup dried cranberries, a quarter cup dried blueberries, a quarter cup dried cherries, a quarter cup dried figs, a half a cup slivered almonds, a quarter cup dried golden raisins, one and a half teaspoon ground allspice, a half a teaspoon ground cinnamon, a half a teaspoon ground ginger, three quarters cup brown sugar, a half a large apple grated, one orange juice and zest, and one lemon juice and zest into a casserole dish. Give it a good mix and cover with aluminum foil. Let it bake at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 90 minutes. This helps all the flavors come together. After nine minutes, remove it and let it cool. 
then mix in a half a cup of alcohol. This recipe called for port, finally had cognac and it is still very tasty. To make our pies, butter and flour, a cupcake pan, or a mincemeat pie pan. This way they won't stick once they're all done. I originally had some guilt about not making my own pie crust, but then I got really sick for a week and now I have no remorse about rolling out some ready-made pie crust. I was originally going to do the opposite and buy mincemeat filling and made crust, but none of the stores around here carry that, so I found this fun alternative. Find a circle cookie cutter that is slightly larger than your cupcake hole. Cut out 12 large circles and push them all the way down to your pan. You now need to prep 12 circles that are roughly the same size as the top of your dough. To make them extra Christmassy, use little cookie cutters to cut out stars, trees, and angels. Leave them on your counter already, and then fill in your basins with mincemeat. Fill it to the top of the dough, but you don't want it to overflow. Now remove the cut images from your circles and put them on top of your mincemeat pies. You can use a fork to try and seal the top and bottom together. Since this is a pie crust, I'll want to puff up so don't feel bad pushing it down. Brush it with an egg wash to give it a nice golden color. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. Let them cool, remove them from the pan, and enjoy! Yum yum yum! Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. I hope you enjoyed our Victorian Christmas desserts. Thank you so much for watching in 2022, and I look forward to seeing you in 2023. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye!